Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. Have I got an easy quilt project for you. It's called a brick layer quilt. All of the supplies that you need for this quilt are listed below your YouTube screen. Now I'm just making a small version of it. This is a baby size, but you can make it bigger and it's really easy to lay it bigger. You just make more squares. So select a light and a dark or a solid and a print. Let's get started. When you purchase your fabric, it is folded in half with your selvage edges together at one side. You want to leave it folded that way. Then you're going to lay it out on your cutting mat and you're going to use the lines on your cutting mat to assist you in cutting out all of your strips. So you're first going to cut this raw edge straight. So here's your fold line, here's your selvages. After you've cut this edge straight, Move your ruler over. Don't move your fabric. Move your ruler over eight and a half inches and do a cut. And continue doing that until you have four sections cut out. Then you're going to leave uh, your fabric folded still again. And you can even stack maybe two of these strips together. And you're going to again cut the selvage ends off. Here's your folded edge. Now you're going to move your ruler over every four and a half inches until you have four sections cut. And you do this for both your A and B fabric. Take one A and one B fabric and bring front sides together. And then do a one quarter inch seam on one edge. Then after you've got all of your pieces stitched together, take them all to your ironing board and press the seam on the back. Then with your darkest fabric on top, you're going to fold it out this way and press your seam. And as you're pressing, you're pushing this seam towards your darkest fabric. After you've got everything pressed, then you're going to lay your blocks out. Now I'm making a small version. I have five rows with five blocks in each row. So take, this is one layout here where they're just up and down like this. And you just keep laying it out like this all the way across. Just keep going until you've got your five there. And then once you have your five, then go ahead and start your second row. Let me get this apart like this so that every other row looks this way. So it has kind of a jagged look to it. And so every other row you would swap the direction of your squares. For the zigzag pattern, I'm going to start out with the light on top and the dark on the bottom. Then I'm going to place the light one next to the light one on top and move it over. Then I'm going to place the dark and the dark together like this and the dark one hits it on the bottom. Then switch it over to where light and light. Then you're going to reverse this. Take your other one and place it like this. Now the, the dark come together, then place the light, and the light comes together, and then place your dark to where the dark comes together. And you can see the beginning of this zigzag pattern. So then for the third row, you would take the way this is laid out and repeat it for the third row. You would take this second row here and repeat it for the fourth row. Keep going on down like that to where every other row is reversed. Now you're going to take each row separately and stitch them together. So take your first two blocks, bring front sides together, and stitch a one quarter inch seam. Then take the next one, bring it on top, and stitch a one quarter inch seam. And then take your next one and stitch a one quarter inch seam. And then you will take your fifth one, lay it on top, and stitch a one quarter inch seam. 
Then take your second row, stitch the blocks together, and continue on down until you have each row stitched together separately. After you have everything stitched, as I said earlier, you're going to be pressing your seams. When you press the seams, I'm going to turn them over. These are the connecting seams for the rows. So you want to make sure that the connecting seams in every other row go in the opposite direction. So this first row, these two connecting seams are going that way. In the second row, these two connecting seams are going that way. So after you've got everything pressed, and I'll show you the reasoning behind having it that way. Now you're going to stitch the rows together. So I'm going to stitch them right together here. So bring them on top. And then you're going to match your connecting seams first. So this seam on the bottom goes in the opposite direction of the seam on top. So you just push these all together, kind of uh, press down in here to make sure it feels flat. If it feels lumpy and bumpy, then you don't have it lined up correctly. Then place pins to hold your seams together on all of your connecting seams. Then go ahead and place pins across. Then stitch your rows together, a one quarter inch seam and keep adding on the next row and the next row until you have all five rows stitched together. After you've got your first two rows stitched together, then press the seams on the back side and then unfold it and press on top. And I try to push my seams that are going all the way across all in one direction. Then continue adding your rows on, stitching them on and pressing them until you have all five rows stitched together. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to layer all your fabrics. This is my fabric for the back. You're going to have the pretty side of your fabric facing against your table. Lay it down so that once you've laid it down, you're looking at the back of your fabric. Then take your cotton batting and lay it on top. Then place your quilt top on top of all of that. Make sure that for this small size quilt, you have about an inch of fabric, of cotton batting and your fabric for the back extending out past all of your edges. Make sure all of your fabric layers are smoothed out. Then take safety pins and scatter them over the top so that they hold all of your layers together. For this size of quilt, I wouldn't use straight pins because you will poke yourself a lot and they're going to fall out. So safety pins is a better choice. Then you're going to do your quilting stitches. Now I just did a small sample of stitches on here. I'm going to refer you to another video tutorial of mine on how to do your quilting stitches. So it'll show you some basic quilt stitch patterns you can do and how to place your fabric in your machine so that you have successful stitches. After all your quilting stitches are done, then you want to trim the excess fabric and cotton batting off. And you want to cut it even with the edge of your quilt top. So place your ruler on top along the edge of your quilt top fabric and then cut it straight. And then you would just continue going around to all of your edges cutting it off. Your last step is to do the binding to cover the edges. And this is the binding right here. And I'm going to refer you to another tutorial of mine on how to put your quilt binding on. So the binding tutorial link is listed below your YouTube screen along with how to do your quilting stitches. That link is also listed below your YouTube screen. 
So this is what it looks like when it's all done. You can make it larger if you like. Remember, just cut more squares, measure the area you want it to cover, and just cut your fabric according to that. Again, this is just a 40 by 40 size baby quilt. I hope you try making this quilt. I had a blast making it because it was so easy. It was sort of mindless sewing activity. Just sewing each of the blocks together is a really simple process on this one. Not a lot of fancy cuts that you have to do. Now, please follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. I'm so glad you came by to check out my sewing room. See you next time and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Click on the bell so you can receive notifications about my latest videos. I'm Cheryl, and this is Scotty, and this is Manny. See you next time, and happy sewing!